A broken window and shattered glass causes the university to make changes to its late night dining option. International education. Find out about a dance teacher with experience from halfway around the world. It's starting to feel like spring and I have all the news you need to know before you head out. I'm Nicole Chadwick. And I'm Addie Haney. All that and more tonight on Phoenix 14 News. Thanks for joining us. Expect more security on campus at a popular late night activity. After several weeks of vandalism at the McEwen Dining Hall, the university is fighting back. Phoenix 14 News' Brandon Marshall is live outside the dining hall this evening. Brandon, will this be the end of Late Night McEwen? Over the last four weeks, some students have been charged for stealing and vandalizing picture frames and breaking patio chairs. Since the start of the spring semester, the outside of the McEwen Dining Hall area has become the scene for many of these incidences. This photo taken by a student shows the internal vandalism done to a paper towel dispenser. And the damages continue. Early Sunday morning, a physical plant worker fixed a window pane after it was broken the night before. It's hard to say. Somebody could have threw something at somebody else and it missed them and just went through this pane of glass. During what students call late night in the queuing, Hal McLean and his co-workers are vigilant throughout the night in order to ensure students stay safe. We don't know what kind of shape they're in. We don't know what they've done before they come through the doors. McLean says people know the difference between students who just want to enjoy the food offered to them and students who are drunk. They get sick. We have to stop what we're doing. Call maintenance. Maintenance has to stop what they're doing. Most of the damages happen outside of McEwen Dining Hall. A camera was installed last year to find out when most of the damages occur and to charge students if needed. The timing is uh, usually somewhere between 1 and 2.30, quarter 3, so it's right when the bars close. Chief Gantos is trying to combat the issue by having security patrol the area more often. He hopes the damages decrease, but says he thinks it is unlikely. Meanwhile, town of Elon police are trying to find out who broke several mailboxes off campus. It happened early Sunday morning on Wooddale and Atkinson Avenues. Many Elon students live on that street. No suspects yet, but police say there were several loud parties that same night. Anyone with information should call Elon police at 336-584-1301. A high school shooting in Ohio is putting schools across the country on high alert for all types of emergency situations. Alamance Community College in Graham simulated an emergency on campus. Our David Hodges was there to find out what it takes to be ready when it matters. On Thursday, Alamance Community College planned for the unpredictable, a shooter on campus. He's coming with me. He's coming with me. But as ACC President Martin Nadelman found out quickly, it's impossible to prepare too much. You know, you think what you write down is absolutely going to work perfectly, and there's probably 50 things we didn't think about. What happens behind the police tape here is just a simulation, but the practice it provides is important because an event like this can happen at any school, anywhere. And it's a feeling that a few Elon students know all too well now. You know, my graduation day at Episcopal now not only is about me graduating, but it's now remembering kind of that last contact with her. At the Episcopal School in Jacksonville, Florida last Tuesday, Headmaster Dale Reagan was shot and killed by Shane Schumerth, a recently fired teacher who took his own life moments later. No students were harmed, but Ashton's brother Jack, a senior at Episcopal who's attending Elon next year, is still having a hard time believing it happened at his school. It was just completely overwhelming, and I was just in complete shock, honestly. Like, I, 
you know, you just kind of think, like, when you got home, it's just like, did that really just happen? And from a reporter who also received his diploma from Miss Reagan, it leaves a huge hole in all of our hearts. One thing that's really bizarre looking forward is, just like Ashton said, is, you know, I painted this picture of graduation in my mind of, you know, her handing me my diploma. And, you know, that was the image of graduation. And it's just like, now it's hard to picture what that will be like. Maybe the only thing harder than planning for something so horrifying is imagining a future after it's already happened. David Hodges, Phoenix 14 News. The town of Elon has a new police chief and he's an Elon alum. Cliff Parker was sworn in last Tuesday. Parker has been with the Burlington Police Department and the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation for 25 years. Parker says building a relationship with the students and the university is a top priority. I welcome input uh, back from uh, you know the university on ways that we can enhance the uh, you know the uh, the relationship and, and ensure uh, safety for our students. When Wachovia was bought by Wells Fargo, students saw a little change in their daily banking. But now anyone who opened a checking account in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Georgia, or Delaware will have to pay a $7 monthly fee. Wells Fargo announced the fee will eventually make its way to all 50 states. The only way to avoid this fee is by having at least $1,500 in your checking account or by setting up a monthly direct deposit of $500. The new fee will go into effect on May 5th for those six states. Results of the latest Elon poll are in, and it seems North Carolinians are feeling more positive about the economy. The poll found that 34% of Tar Heel State residents expect the national economy to improve by the end of the year. That's twice the number from the poll last September. In fact, 4% fewer people are pessimistic about their economic future. One local business owner is also optimistic about the economy's future. He's building his business on elbow grease and drive. Andrew Tilden has the story. The starter cruise control, electronic ignition system, intake manifold here, your fuel injector, timing belt. Chester Allred knows cars. Starting at age six, he has been around cars for much of his life. Uh, mother and father were service station operators. I went to elementary school and then came and went to work. At Chester's Auto on West Haggard Avenue, Allred, 56, yeah, uses his building. car knowledge to supervise repairs. Allred's son-in-law, Randy Ricketts, works in the repair shop. There's your bad brake pad, the ABS module, and your radiator and your condenser. He too shares this love of cars. What I enjoy to do, if you, can, if you can leave your house in the morning and you're happy to where you're going, then that's where you need to be. A tough and talented worker, yeah, yeah, they don't never come clean. They're... Ricketts owes a lot of his car knowledge to Allred. He's like a dictionary. When it comes to this kind of work, you can just ask him and he knows. I mean, he just... I guess it's because he's been doing it so long. Allred's passion for cars led him down a road where college wasn't necessary. But what about his grandchildren? I want to be a NASCAR driver. Ten-year-old Philip has aspirations that don't involve college. He races in go-kart leagues, which is the fast track to professional racing. And he gets race training from, you guessed it. Uh, mostly my papa. <laughs> he taught me most of the stuff. Allred plans on retiring in about eight years and is already planning the future of the business. It is now passed on to my son-in-law uh, to learn how we have operated. We have been successful. We will in turn continue to teach the young Philip. As Chester's auto gets passed down, we so does do his right. knowledge. Yep. Andrew right. Tilden, Phoenix 14 News. Later in the show, spring break is around the corner and we'll have how to make sure your relaxing week off is not a disaster. Six donuts and two miles of running, a challenge our Joe Bruno took on. A former Elon administrator has lost his battle with cancer. Brian Collins died on Wednesday. He was the associate director of Residence Life. Elon's, at Elon, Collins oversaw Elon traditions such as Catch the Fire. After four years, he left the university last spring to fight a recurrence of cancer. The French Honor Society and Cooking Club gathered to honor the life of Collins Friday by hosting the crepe gathering. Students, faculty, and staff met in Carleton to cook, eat, and raise money for the American Cancer Society in memory of Collins. French community advisor Sophie Adamson says she talked to Brian about the event shortly before his death. Brian was always the big supporter of the French House Crepe events. 
And no matter what I brought to him, no matter you know what cost it would be to hire a crep maker, he always said yes without blinking an eye. And so I called him last week and said, I thought of this great idea, and I thought it'd be really neat to have an annual Collins crep gathering you know, in honor of you and your constant support. And he was really touched by it. And, um, Collins was 36 years old. His family is asking for a donation to the Chaplain Fund in lieu of flowers. For more information on how to donate, go to our website at phoenix14news.wordpress.com. We'll be right back. There's a gym here on campus that students can use for free, so why would someone pay to do the same thing? I spoke with one student who says it's worth it to work out off campus. Ashley Braun loves to exercise. I just like to put on my music and just forget about everything else. <laughs> but instead of going to the fitness center, she looks off campus for her escape. I just like to work out and just by myself, just think, you know, not have to worry about who's there or what I'm wearing. There are 10 gyms in Burlington. Braun goes to the Rush Fitness Complex on South Church Street. She pays $40 a month for membership. But Ashley Braun says going to a place like the Rush motivates her more than staying on campus. I like feel like I to go a lot more often because I'm paying for it. The Rush has 24-hour access for members, with professional trainers and classes offered during the day. While Elon has set hours, they also offer student trainers and student taught classes. But despite the off-campus interest, dozens of students still visit the Campus Fitness Center every day. The new Anytime Fitness will be located at 1617 Glidewell Drive, about 10 minutes from Elon. And though the gym at Elon is free, Braun says for her it's worth it to pay the monthly fee because she prefers doing her running away from Elon students. I can just go and just do whatever I want to do. No one's really like watching. Nicole Chadwick, Phoenix 14 News. Anytime Fitness will cost $37 a month for a one-year membership plus a joining fee. For more information about a new gym, visit, visit our website. From working out to working during break, some Elon students are giving up the beach to help out around the world. Elon Volunteers is offering three alternative spring break trips to the, to the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and Honduras. Several religious groups are also offering trips. The aim of these service trips is to offer students a chance to travel somewhere new and to help people in the community. Midterms may be on many students' minds, but spring break is only five days away. Before you head out for some fun in the sun, Grace Sweeney has some tips. Addie, preparing for spring break should be more about knowing how to be safe on vacation than figuring out what swimsuit to pack. I spoke to an Elon senior who knows firsthand why taking precautions makes for a better trip. Like many Elon students, Elena Pepino is getting ready for spring break. She's heading down to Panama City Beach for the second time with 20 of her friends. Because it's within driving distance and it's affordable. Last year, when she drove down to Florida, she got in a little trouble when she was pulled over at a highway checkpoint. It's of him questioning me and saying, if we had the dogs come search your car, would they find anything? Um, I finally blurted out and said, I have two of my friends who are 21 in this car. I don't know if they packed alcohol or not. After she told the officers that, she was free to go. This year, Pepino plans to not allow any alcohol in her car to make the drive easier. When you actually get to your spring break destination, here are a few things to keep in mind. Stay with your friends if you decide to go to clubs or bars. Use the ATM during the day. Have a designated driver or get a cab when you go out. And be mindful of riptides when swimming. Lastly, know the alcohol policies of your vacation spot. Pepino admits she doesn't know specifically what the laws are for alcohol in Panama City Beach. I, I mean, I honestly don't know if there are any specific rules or regulations. I just, you know, know how we live here at Elon in North Carolina. Those in the state of Florida, it is illegal to have an open container of alcohol in a car or within 50 feet of a road. Both North and South Carolina prohibit drinking in a public area. This means beaches. After a close call last year, Pepino will be prepared so she can have fun and stay out of trouble. Besides knowing what the laws are for the state or country you're planning on spending your spring break, make sure to print out an itinerary of your travel plans to stay organized. Addie, Going away for spring break also means your stuff could be vulnerable to theft. So what can you do? First, invest in timers that will automatically turn your lights on and off to make it seem like people are home. It may be obvious, but don't forget to check that all windows and doors are locked. Take your spare key out from under the mat. That's the first place someone will look if they're trying to break in. 
It's also just as important to unplug any appliances that may be fire hazards. And if you're looking to leave your car at Elon over break, park it in a well-lit area and make sure everything in your car, including your cell phone charger, is out of sight. Here's where you can get the cheapest gas around Elon. The Sitco on Church Street is the cheapest, with a gallon of regular costing $3.67. The Marathon on Church Street and the Quality Plus on Webb Avenue are tied at $3.69 a gallon. And Kangaroo on Haggard is the most expensive, a gallon will cost you $3.71. Though midterms may be casting a cloud over your week, at least it will be sunny outside. Here's the Phoenix 5-day forecast. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy in the morning with the sun coming out in the afternoon and a high of 75. Wednesday and Thursday will be mostly sunny with temperatures in the high 70s. Friday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 79 degrees. Trying to pack for spring break, we have the upcoming weather for some popular spring break destinations. Panama City Beach will be partly cloudy at the beginning of the week with highs in the upper 70s. The weather will be stormy in Myrtle Beach this weekend, but will be sunny starting Monday with temperatures in the low 70s. Visitor, visitors to the Outer Banks will enjoy plenty of sunshine with temperatures in the high 60s. And if you're heading up north, the weather is in New England will be still sunny, but colder with temperatures in the high 40s. From Ghana to Elon, one professor brings his dance moves across the ocean. A video that went viral to make a difference. We have student reactions on the Kony 2012 project.